In times of great uncertainty, some things become more clear. The things we take for granted, the people we depend on daily. Here at 11 Alive, we'd like to say thank you. First responders, medical staff, sanitation workers, truck drivers, postal workers, and every brave Georgian doing their part to make a difference. We see you, we hear you, and we appreciate all that you do. Let's start with a viral message going around. Quote, vast majority of people who died had ibuprofen Advil in their system. This message is fake. We just bought 20 dust masks for $97. Are you doing this to help people or are you doing this to make money or both? Both. Take this email sent to the Verify team. Is it safe to have your house cleaned by outside workers? The best practice is to limit guests to emergencies only. We know things are changing every day, but we're here with you. Continuous COVID-19 coverage during primetime. We're committed to giving you facts, not fear. On 11 Alive News Primetime, weeknights from 8 to 11 on WATF. There are everyday actions to help prevent the spread of respiratory diseases. Wash your hands. Avoid close contact with people who are sick. Avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth. Stay home when you are sick. Cover your cough or sneeze. Clean and disinfect frequently touched objects with household cleaning spray. For more information, visit cdc.gov COVID-19. This message brought to you by the National Association of Broadcasters and this station. Today at noon on 11 Alive. We are seeing that lack of smell or altered taste can be a symptom. We answer your coronavirus related medical questions. Because 11 Alive is where Atlanta speaks. Televised newscasts, not enough for you. Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials, and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. In times of great uncertainty, some things become more clear. The things we take for granted, the people we depend on daily. Here at 11 Alive, we'd like to say thank you. First responders, medical staff, sanitation workers, truck drivers, postal workers, and every brave Georgian doing their part to make a difference. We see you, we hear you, and we appreciate all that you do. Let's start with a viral message going around. Quote, vast majority of people who died had ibuprofen Advil in their system. This message is fake. We just bought 20 dust masks for $97. Are you doing this to help people or are you doing this to make money or both? Both. Take this email sent to the Verify team. Is it safe to have your house cleaned by outside workers? The best practice is to limit guests to emergencies only. We know things are changing every day, but we're here with you. Continuous COVID-19 coverage during primetime. We're committed to giving you facts, not fear. On 11 Alive News Primetime, weeknights from 8 to 11 on WATF. There are everyday actions to help prevent the spread of respiratory diseases. Wash your hands. Avoid close contact with people who are sick. Avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth. Stay home when you are sick. Cover your cough or sneeze. Clean and disinfect frequently touched objects with household cleaning spray. For more information, visit cdc.gov COVID-19. This message brought to you by the National Association of Broadcasters and this station.
today at noon on 11 Alive. We are seeing that lack of smell or altered taste can be a symptom. We answer your coronavirus-related medical questions. Because 11 Alive is where Atlanta speaks. Televised newscasts, not enough for you? Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials, and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. Let's start with a viral message going around. Quote, vast majority of people who died had ibuprofen Advil in their system. This message is fake. We just bought 20 dust masks for $97. Are you doing this to help people or are you doing this to make money or both? Both. Take this email sent to the Verify team. Is it safe to have your house cleaned by outside workers? The best practice is to limit guests to emergencies only. We know things are changing every day, but we're here with you. Continuous COVID-19 coverage during primetime. We're committed to giving you facts, not fear. On 11 Alive News Primetime, weeknights from 8 to 11 on WATF. There are everyday actions to help prevent the spread of respiratory diseases. Wash your hands. Avoid close contact with people who are sick. Avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth. Stay home when you are sick. Cover your cough or sneeze. Clean and disinfect frequently touched objects with household cleaning spray. For more information, visit cdc.gov COVID-19. This message brought to you by the National Association of Broadcasters and this station. Today at noon on 11 Alive. We are seeing that lack of smell or altered taste can be a symptom. We answer your coronavirus related medical questions. Because 11 Alive is where Atlanta speaks. Televised newscasts, not enough for you? Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials, and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. In times of great uncertainty, some things become more clear. The things we take for granted, the people we depend on daily. Here at 11 Alive, we'd like to say thank you. First responders, medical staff, sanitation workers, truck drivers, postal workers, and every brave Georgian doing their part to make a difference. We see you, we hear you, and we appreciate all that you do. Let's start with a viral message going around. Quote, vast majority of people who died had ibuprofen Advil in their system. This message is fake. We just bought 20 dust masks for $97. Are you doing this to help people or are you doing this to make money or both? Both. Take this email sent to the Verify team. Is it safe to have your house cleaned by outside workers? The best practice is to limit guests to emergencies only. We know things are changing every day, but we're here with you. Continuous COVID-19 coverage during primetime. We're committed to giving you facts, not fear. On 11 Alive News Primetime, weeknights from 8 to 11 on WATF. There are everyday actions to help prevent the spread of respiratory diseases. Right now at noon, the push to wear masks marches on across the state. Some counties even issuing public health alerts as infections continue to surge. The latest in the fight to contain COVID-19. This is something that people should take seriously. 
Atlanta's mayor talking masks and morale in the city's police force in a new exclusive interview. 11 Alive News at noon starts now. Right now, day two and the final day of the governor's wear a mask fly around tour. The U.S. Surgeon General joining him today, traveling the state and asking Georgians to wear face masks ahead of the busy July 4th weekend. We want everyone to understand that the coronavirus disease is spreading mostly among young people, but there are things that you can do to stay safe. And the governor has a message for you. If you want some college football this fall and other sports, wear your mask for the next few weeks. Let's flatten the curve and drive the numbers down. Surgeon General Jerome Adams and the governor starting the day in Dalton. They'll also visit Augusta and Brunswick, six stops in total over two days. Governor Kemp says that the mask issue has been over politicized and Georgians don't need a mandate to do the right thing. But that hasn't stopped at least one Georgia city from taking action on its own. The city of Savannah's mandate started yesterday, even though the governor has said in the past cities can't issue orders stricter than the states. And many leaders here in Atlanta want to follow Savannah's lead. Mara Sirianni has more. Members of the Georgia Coalition to Save Lives are calling on Governor Kemp to make mask wearing mandatory and say if he won't, he needs to allow city and county governments to put their own orders in place. This morning, members of the newly formed coalition met via video conference to discuss a model local mask wearing ordinance. The coalition is made up of elected officials, lawyers, civil and human rights organizations, faith leaders and community members. Atlanta City Council President Felicia Moore weighing in on the topic. Moore says she agrees with a mandatory face mask order like the one signed earlier this week by Savannah Mayor Van Johnson. We still have the issue with what the state says and, and not, but we know Savannah has moved beyond that. And so maybe we need to join their fight as well. So if he has to go after Savannah, he has to go after a whole lot of us at the same time. That may be a strategy. You'll remember just yesterday, Emory's top doctors told us they feel a mask mandate is crucial in curbing the number of confirmed cases here in Georgia. And in an exclusive interview just about an hour ago, I asked Atlanta Mayor Keisha Lance Bottoms her thoughts on a mask mandate. Would she issue one for the city? I want to start with the big mask debate. So right now, the city of Savannah is the only Georgia city with a mask requirement. Do you plan to issue a mask mandate for the city of Atlanta? Well, it's something that we are in discussions about and what I know is this, that with or without um, a, something mandating that people wear masks, people should still wear masks. Mm -hmm. And it is really the most unselfish thing that you can do as it relates to COVID-19. It not only protects yourself, um, but the people around you. And when I'm looking at numbers for COVID-19 that are very alarming, um, I haven't seen numbers this high in a very long time. And this is something that people should take seriously. And so we'll continue to watch what happens mm -hmm. in Savannah and then make our decisions accordingly. Is it something you are thinking about? It is something I she said it is something she is thinking about. Our half hour conversation spanning many topics, including morale within the Atlanta Police Department. She confirms APD is still dealing with some call outs, but it's not as severe compared to about a week and a half ago. Morale plummeting to an all time low following the arrest of eight officers, five of them losing their jobs over a controversial police shooting and two college students being tased. Anything, Mayor, that you've been able to say or do recently to boost morale and make these officers feel valued? And also, do you think that's your responsibility now? Well, I think it's unfortunate that our officers feel that way, but I think it's not just in Atlanta. I think that's happening across the country and it has. this has been trending this way for a very long time. But that being said, I understand that our officers have concerns um, about going out on the streets and and not just the way that they feel that the public um, is treating them, but certainly um, their response to my response to what's happened in the city. That being said, I've always been committed to public safety in our city as and especially to our police officers. Um, during the first uh, couple of years of, in office, I 
put in place a 30% pay increase for our police officers, which was the largest in the history of the city. And I don't say that um, simply to mention the monetary part of it, because that money doesn't make somebody always feel valued. But, but to remind our officers that when I didn't have the support of any police unions, in the city, I still did what I thought was the right thing to do because I believe that they deserve to be paid and I believe they deserve to have the opportunity to live in, be able to live in our city, afford to live in our city and not have to work two to three jobs. So in the same way that I made that commitment to our officers, I just ask that they be reminded of the commitment that they made to our city. We are the only local station that the mayor spoke with today. Look for more of my in-depth interview at 5.30 tonight. Mayor Bottoms with a fascinating look at her family's history and the census. It is 12.06 right now, and we broke another record for new COVID-19 cases just yesterday. And there's growing concern we could see a spike in hospitalizations as well. The State Department of Public Health reporting nearly 3,000 new cases. That's about 700 more than the old record. You can see the orange bars on the right there. That's how you can tell. The dotted line here shows our moving 14-day average has spiked over the last week and a half. And another 200 people ended up in the hospital yesterday alone. That brings the total number of people currently hospitalized to more than 1,500. It is not the highest number we've had in this pandemic, but it is the largest since the Georgia Emergency Management Agency started providing this data back on May 1st. We talked with several hospitals and they all say if you need medical care, do not wait. Don't delay. We're very prepared to separate those with COVID infection or potential COVID infection from everyone else. So it is very safe to come to receive your health care. Hospitals report that even with these new cases, there's no shortage of bed space to care for other medical needs. The rise in cases prompting Cobb and Douglas counties to issue public health alerts. Both counties are reporting a substantial rise in daily confirmed COVID-19 cases. And in the last few weeks, more than 300 businesses have been impacted. 75 outbreaks are now under investigation. The U.S. economy bouncing back in a big way, according to the latest data from the U.S. Labor Department, gaining nearly 5 million jobs last month. That brings the national unemployment rate down to 11 percent, beating expectations. This as the second month in a row, we have seen a lower unemployment rate, but still it is far above the historic lows of 3.5 percent that we saw earlier this year. President Donald Trump celebrating the news during a press briefing this morning. Today's announcement proves that our economy is roaring back. It's coming back extremely strong. We have some areas where we're putting out the flames or the fires, and that's working out well. The U.S. Uh, analysts say that while this is good news, the economy still has a long way to go before we're back to normal. Georgia seeing some of the largest decreases in first time unemployment claims last week, falling by more than 9900, according to the U.S. Labor Department. Chesley, on to you with our weather. All right, let's take a look at it now. Live look out the window here. This is over into uh, the Rome area. Not bad. We have a few cumulus clouds out there starting to form thanks to the daytime heating, of course. And we could see some showers coming out of those clouds. Not, nothing out there right now. If we see any pop up, I think it will be after two or three o'clock. A couple of thunderstorms are possible. Not anticipating much in the way of any severe weather at all. Not like what's taking place over toward Mississippi. Look at these. Yeah, flooding type thunderstorms <laughs> heading further down to the south. Again, we'll get those pop up showers and it will be isolated. Not as widespread as what we're seeing over there as well. Temperatures in the 80s already. We'll get up to near 90 for an afternoon high temperature today. Where we have those isolated showers will help to cool the atmosphere down just a little bit, but likely you won't see it. It's only a 30% chance. So a couple thunderstorms will be around. We'll lose that threat once we lose the daytime heating. So after about 9 or 10 o'clock, uh, that will go away. If you're going to be eating your dinner out on the patio, temperatures will be right around 83 degrees by 7 o'clock tonight. Still a bit sticky out there. Still a bit humid and as we head toward the holiday weekend not much change in the forecast i'll break it all down for you coming up all right chesley thank you and we have a heads up now for parents in cobb county the school year 
may not start on August 3rd after all. Cobb School Board calling a special virtual meeting for later today to discuss the start date for the upcoming school year. So for parents, this means you'll have to wait a bit longer before choosing how you want your kids to return to school, whether in person or the virtual class option. The selection process was supposed to start today. This meeting coming just days after the governor extended the state of emergency and social distancing rules. Clark Atlanta University, Morehouse College and Spelman College announcing reopening plans for the fall semester. The schools plan to resume in-person classes on August 19th. They will require mandatory testing of students, faculty and staff before coming to campus. They will also have to undergo temperature checks and use an app to check for symptoms daily and face masks will be required in all public spaces. A dog in Georgia testing positive for coronavirus, making it the second known case in the U.S. The warning now from health experts. With tenuous COVID-19 coverage during primetime, we're committed to giving you facts, not fear. On 11 Alive News Primetime, weeknights from 8 to 11 on WATF. There are everyday actions to help prevent the spread of respiratory diseases. Wash your hands. Avoid close contact with people who are sick. Avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth. Stay home when you are sick. Cover your cough or sneeze. Clean and disinfect frequently touched objects with household cleaning spray. For more information, visit cdc.gov COVID-19. This message brought to you by the National Association of Broadcasters and this station. Today at noon on 11 Alive. We are seeing that lack of smell or altered taste can be a symptom. We answer your coronavirus related medical questions because 11 Alive is where Atlanta speaks. Televised newscasts, not enough for you. Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. Let's start with a viral message going around. Quote, vast majority of people who died had ibuprofen Advil in their system. This message is fake. We just bought 20 dust masks for $97. Are you doing this to help people or are you doing this to make money or both? Both. Take this email sent to the Verify team. Is it safe to have your house cleaned by outside workers? The best practice is to limit guests to emergencies only. We know things are changing every day, but we're here with you. Continuous COVID-19 coverage during primetime. We're committed to giving you facts, not fear. On 11 Alive News Primetime, weeknights from 8 to 11 on WA. A dog in Georgia testing positive for the virus that causes COVID-19. State health officials confirming the infection yesterday, saying the six-year-old mixed breed suddenly developed a neurological illness that was caused by another condition, not the virus. We're told the dog's owners recently tested positive for coronavirus and a second dog was tested. Those results are pending. Health experts are urging people who contract COVID-19 to avoid touching their pets. The main security checkpoint at Hartsfield Jackson International Airport has reopened today after a TSA agent tested positive for the virus. The airport closed it yesterday for deep cleaning, causing lines to back up at other security checkpoints. That worker last at the checkpoint on Tuesday from 3.30 a.m. until noon. Any passengers who may have come in contact with an infected person within the last 14 days should follow the CDC's recommendations for travel associated exposure. All TSA employees who work the same shift as the infected worker have been asked to quarantine. And officials want to remind you that if you're flying out of Hartsville Jackson, protect yourself and others by wearing a face covering or mask. 
We have been talking a lot about masks over the last couple of days and health experts are always reminding you to wear them anytime you're in public. So how effective are face coverings when it comes to preventing COVID-19? Let's take a closer look. There's no doubt about it. Masks are one of the best tools we have to control the spread of coronavirus. So while the rules around face coverings are changing every day, the science is clear. Masks aren't mandatory in every state, but the CDC recommends everyone wear cloth face coverings in public settings, especially when it's hard to practice social distancing. So what does wearing a mask do? The coronavirus is spread through respiratory droplets that people release when talking. Yeah, just talking, coughing, or sneezing. The mask's function is simple. It serves as a physical barrier blocking these droplets from reaching other people. Even if you're not experiencing any symptoms, you could still have the virus and could spread it inadvertently. Masks are most useful when widely used in public settings. Let's look at two people. When no one is wearing a mask, risk of spread is high. Put a mask on one person, that risk decreases. And if both people wear a mask, it's a low risk that the virus will be spread. In April, researchers in Hong Kong collected samples of respiratory droplets from people infected with the coronavirus. They compared levels of the virus in samples from people who were and were not wearing masks. Without masks, 30 to 40% of the samples contained the virus. But with masks, none of them did. Another recent study found that the transmission rates dropped in states that made masks mandatory. So for your safety and the safety of others, keep wearing those masks. 1216 is the current time. Time for a look at your forecast. And it's going to be a, a hot one out there, to say the least. Hot and humid. Sun is shining. Good day to get out there and walk the dog. Walk the dog. Maybe you wait a little bit for the sun to go down. Just a little bit, right? 89 for a forecast high today, or close to 90 is what we'll call it. Isolated thunderstorms are certainly possible this afternoon. I'm thinking after about 2 or 3 o'clock. A little northwest breeze now at about 6 miles per hour. As you can see, there's not a whole lot going on at all. Typically, and what we have been experiencing has been those showers popping up uh, mainly during the afternoon. Now, I do think we'll have a few isolated showers around, but it won't happen until after about 2 o'clock. Unlike what's taking place back off here to the west, you can see some flooding rain over toward parts of Mississippi, but not heading eastward, heading southward away uh, from us. We don't have to worry about that. Temperatures right at 85 degrees right now in Atlanta, 88 in Athens and over toward Edenton. Those have been the warm spots these last couple of days. 86 in Canton, 86 also over toward uh, Rome and Rome, Georgia. The cool spot would be Blairsville up here in the North Georgia Mountains, 77 degrees, currently 81 up toward Canton. The wasometer is how we rate your weather on a scale from 1 to 11, with 11 being the most perfect day we can have for this time of year. Man, I can't even remember the last time we had an 11 alive day, but we got a 7 today with that 30% chance for the showers. Temperatures well close to normal. We should be uh, right around 89 degrees this time of year. So right on target, right on target for uh, July. We're looking at uh, plenty of sunshine. Again, we do have the cumulus clouds out there, but again, we will see those showers begin to fire up. We're also tracking a stationary boundary a little bit further down to the south of us, which is allowing that northerly flow to come on in. But we'll get little waves riding along this boundary, which will keep the chance for the showers coming our way. And they're weak, and so it won't happen until we get into the daytime heating during the afternoon. That's when we'll start to see some of those uh, showers and thunderstorms begin to pop up. Notice the dark green shade, which is a level one out of a possible five. That's a marginal risk. That's where it will be back off to the west where we saw those showers uh, making their way down to the south. We have the light green, which just means general thunderstorms around. Now, even though we don't have a severe weather threat, a few of those thunderstorms could pack some very gusty winds and also could have some frequent lightning associated with it. And of course, those heavy downpours could lead to some ponding on the roads. Take a look. Our forecast track model plays it out beautifully. We start off with the partly sunny skies for this afternoon. Once we get past two or three o'clock is when we can see some of those isolated showers begin to form. Now embedded in some of those will be a few of those thunderstorms that could drop that brief heavy rain on you. So carry the umbrella with you just in case or keep it handy, maybe in the back seat and grab it before you get out of the car. We're going to hold on to the sh chance for showers in the forecast at least through about nine o'clock tonight. Once we lose that daytime heating, that goes away. We'll start it all over again for your Friday. Start you off with partly sunny skies, mainly in the morning and early afternoon. Once we get past again, 2 o'clock, that's where I stopped it here. That's where we see those isolated showers popping up. We'll give it another 30% chance for our Friday. And it won't, it won't change as we head into the weekend. You're looking at a 30% chance for the showers again on Saturday, which is the 4th of July. Temperatures right near 90 degrees, 88 on Sunday with that same percentage. Even as we head into the work week next week, we're still looking at uh, a 30 to 40 percent chance for the rain and temperatures will hang out in the upper 80s. Sheba, back to you.
All right, Chesley, July is here, and usually that means one thing around here, the AJC Peachtree Road Race. But this year's 51st running has been postponed until Thanksgiving Day. And while there won't be any fanfare along the course this year, there are still ways the Atlanta Track Club will honor the event. They're encouraging runners to participate in a virtual version. The Track Club is urging everyone to steer clear of the actual race route on the 4th for the safety of others. And if you're more of a race fan than runner, you can still tune in from 8 a.m. to 10 a.m. to see last year's race right here on 11 Alive. This is Airman First Class, Hannah Gregg. I'm at Insert Lake Air Base with the 728th Air Mobility Squadron. I'd just like to say happy 4th of July to my family and friends back home in Concord. For you, get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials, and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. Let's start with a viral message going around. Quote, vast majority of people who died had ibuprofen Advil in their system. This message is fake. We just bought 20 dust masks for $97. Are you doing this to help people or are you doing this to make money or both? Both. Take this email sent to the Verify team. Is it safe to have your house cleaned by outside workers? The best practice is to limit guests to emergencies only. We know things are changing every day, but we're here with you. Continuous COVID-19 coverage during primetime. We're committed to giving you facts, not fear. On 11 Alive News Primetime, weeknights from 8 to 11 on WATF. There are everyday actions to help prevent the spread of respiratory diseases. Wash your hands. Avoid close contact with people who are sick. Avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth. There has been a lot of speculation right now on whether sports, professional and college will resume in the fall. And now the governor is weighing in on the future of sports in our state. If you're ready for some football in the fall, as I've told my daughters, you know, they keep asking me, Dad, do you think we're going to have college football? You know, surely we got to have the season. I said, well, if people, especially our young people, don't start wearing a mask when they're going out in public and our numbers keep rising, that's going to be a tall task. The College Football Hall of Fame has reopened and it also revealed a new exhibit honoring historically black colleges and universities. What they could not have predicted is how it would resonate after protests over social injustice reached their doors last month. Hall of Fame CEO, uh, well, she gave us a sneak peek. Take a look. It was amazing to see the volunteers, the amount of volunteers that came down all, all races, all genders, families, couples, individuals. This guy came with his dogs and, you know, they brought trash bags and brooms and water bottles and said, tell us what to do. We've been closed for three and a half months. We closed on March 16th. Just having our doors open is a win. Arnett Ace Mumford was a coaching legend at four historically black universities. From in light of the conversations that are going on right now, in light of, of all the, the movement and, and, and the action that's being taken. We wanted to celebrate the positive. We wanted to celebrate something that's, that has meant so much to so many people and just really make it shine. And what a perfect time, time to do that when we open and kind of put that out there and put that in the forefront. Timely indeed. Despite COVID case numbers growing by the day, some communities are still holding July 4th festivities. Up next, how they plan to keep everyone safe. Ibuprofen Advil in their system. This message is fake. We just bought 20 dust masks for $97. Are you doing this to help people or are you doing this to make money or both? Both. Take this email sent to the Verify team. Is it safe to have your house cleaned by outside workers? The best practice is to limit guests to emergencies only. We know things are changing every day, but we're here with you. 
continuous COVID-19 coverage during primetime. We're committed to giving you facts, not fear, on 11 Alive News Primetime, weeknights from 8 to 11 on WATF. There are everyday actions to help prevent the spread of respiratory diseases. Wash your hands. Avoid close contact with people who are sick. Avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth. Stay home when you are sick. Cover your cough or sneeze. Clean and disinfect frequently touched objects with household cleaning spray. For more information, visit cdc.gov COVID-19. This message brought to you by the National Association of Broadcasters and this station. Today at noon on 11 Alive. We are seeing that lack of smell or altered taste can be a symptom. We answer your coronavirus related medical questions because 11 Alive is where Atlanta speaks. Televised newscasts, not enough for you. Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. In times of great uncertainty, some things become more clear. The th Have you heard that sound in your neighborhood lately? It's not even the 4th of July and authorities say more fireworks are going off. This is happening nationwide at all hours of the night for weeks. Some call it COVID boredom. Others think it might go on well after July 4th. Tonight on Up Late, we're talking to the professionals to find out what's up with the wave of fireworks. This year, many traditional Independence Day celebrations will look a lot different thanks to COVID-19. And while some communities are canceling their plans, Woodstock is choosing to adapt. Elwin Lopez explains how you can still enjoy the 4th safely. We really need to remember that there's just a pandemic happening right now. Celebrating the 4th of July usually tends to lend itself to large gatherings. But Emory Dr. Carlos El Rio and others advise against that with Georgia still in the thick of the COVID-19 pandemic. Going out with with lots of people, large gatherings to watch the, the, the fireworks is probably not a good thing. The popular 4th of July fireworks display has been canceled at Stone Mountain this weekend. Over the past two weeks, DeKalb County has seen a significant spike in COVID-19 cases, but fireworks are still a go in Woodstock. Our fireworks display does not encourage um, gathering at one single location. Cody Thickpen, Woodstock Assistant City Manager, says folks can enjoy the show without having to gather at the square. They'll be able to easily view the fireworks display from their vehicles and enter and exit their preferred viewing location in a safe and orderly fashion. Over the past week, Cherokee County has seen a large jump of COVID-19 cases. The county was averaging about 15 cases a day before the spike. Now they are around 30. If you are venturing out over the weekend, Dr. Shirag Patel, Population Health Medical Director at Wellstar, says plan ahead. You want to go someplace where you can adequately socially distance. You can take your own utensils, your own cup, your own food, your own alcohol and that you can safely wear a cloth covering mask. On 11alive.com, you can find more information about that fireworks display that will take place over the weekend in Woodstock. Thank you so much for watching 11 Alive News at noon. I'm Sheba Russell. We'll see you back here tomorrow. Stay safe. Let's start with a viral message going around. 
quote, vast majority of people who died had ibuprofen Advil in their system. This message is fake. We just bought 20 dust masks for $97. Are you doing this to help people or are you doing this to make money or both? Both. Take this email sent to the Verify team. Is it safe to have your house cleaned by outside workers? The best practice is to limit guests to emergencies only. We know things are changing every day, but we're here with you. Continuous COVID-19 coverage during primetime. We're committed to giving you facts, not fear. On 11 Alive News Primetime, weeknights from 8 to 11 on WATF. There are everyday actions to help prevent the spread of respiratory diseases. Wash your hands. Avoid close contact with people who are sick. Avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth. Stay home when you are sick. Cover your cough or sneeze. Clean and disinfect frequently touched objects with household cleaning spray. For more information, visit cdc.gov COVID-19. This message brought to you by the National Association of Broadcasters and this station. Today at noon on 11 Alive. We are seeing that lack of smell or altered taste can be a symptom. We answer your coronavirus related medical questions. Because 11 Alive is where Atlanta speaks. Televised newscast, not enough for you. Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials, and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. In times of great uncertainty, some things become more clear. The things we take for granted, the people we depend on daily. Here at 11 Alive, we'd like to say thank you. First responders, medical staff, sanitation workers, truck drivers, postal workers, and every brave Georgian doing their part to make a difference. We see you, we hear you, and we appreciate all that you do. Let's start with a viral message going around. Quote, vast majority of people who died had ibuprofen Advil in their system. This message is fake. We just bought 20 dust masks for $97. Are you doing this to help people or are you doing this to make money or both? Both. Take this email sent to the Verify team. Is it safe to have your house cleaned by outside workers? The best practice is to limit guests to emergencies only. 